Hey everybody, Eric back with some more um, content to drop, I guess. Um, so now that we are in, I don't even know what week five of isolation, um, I wanted to discuss a little bit about prayer. And I know Maria discussed this um, around family prayer, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of background about a global type of prayer um, that the church does and that you can get involved with. Um, I think it's a pretty good way for one, uh, to learn a bit more background and context about our faith. I think it's a good way that we can still feel connected to people in our church without actually being there. It's much like Sunday Mass, but it's something we can do on a daily basis. So, I have this huge book titled Christian Prayer. But what this actually is is something called a breviary. The Divine Office, or... The Liturgy of the Hours. And you may have heard about this. Um, it's something that's probably a bit more old school for people. I didn't actually know about it until I started looking at becoming um, a member of a secular Franciscan order um, because the secular Franciscans actually are obligated to pray um, two of the hours, which we'll go into in a minute. I want to give you a little bit of background about the Liturgy of the Hours. Uh, very little, and I would urge you to speak to either Father Jonathan um, Father Kieran, um, or your parents if they're familiar with it, just so you can get some more information on it, because I myself can, do not remember everything. Um, so yeah, feel free to drop questions and comments as well, and somebody will answer them. Um, but it said in all parts of the church, so Western and Eastern, there are specific hours. So when we say the liturgy of the hours, um, there are certain times that these prayers are prayed. Um, so the original eight, um, I'm going to go through them and give you the time so you can think about how early you'd have to be up to do all of these, um, or how late you'd have to stay up. But the first one is called Matins, but that is at about 2 a.m. Then you have Lauds, which is the dawn prayer at about 5 a.m. Um, you have Prime, or early morning prayer, which is at 6 a.m. Terce, or mid-morning prayer, which is at 9 a.m. Sext, or midday prayer, at the sixth hour, um, that's 12 noon. Um, Known, none, or mid-afternoon prayer, which is at 3 p.m. Vespers, which is evening prayer, it's at 6 p.m. And Compline, or Compline, um, that's night prayer, and it's at 7 p.m. So there's lots of hours, and um, originally, before Vatican II, I believe that these eight hours were prayed by monks and priests and clergy members um, obligatorily. After the Second Vatican Council, um, there was a new decree about how the, the hours were going to be maintained going forward, and they were split into major and minor hours. So the major hours um, became the Office of Readings, which was formerly the 2 a.m. Matins prayer, so that was a major hour, and then lauds, the morning prayer, and then you'd have daytime prayer, and the commitment was for one or more of these hours, so that was your mid-morning, noon, or 3 p.m. prayer. And then the next major hour was vespers, and then the 7 p.m. prayer was a minor hour. So the idea was to hit the major ones. Um, but you could go on to the minor. You follow along, there's prayers for each day, there's prayers to follow along in each part of the liturgical calendar. So you've got your Easter time, you've got your ordinary time, you've got Advent, you've got Lent, and this book will tell you exactly which ones you're supposed to pray. So, um, as an example, because I'm not going to be able to find where we are that quick, um, we've got the first week of Lent, and you can see that there's a Tuesday, and that's the morning prayer. So. Ideally, you'd be able to go to the one that you needed, the major or minor hour that you needed, um, and then you follow the order. And before I start butchering the order of this, I'm going to show you an app that I use um, and that I used to learn how to use this book. Using the book is way more beneficial, I find. The app is great, and I'll show you a cool thing about the app because I do like this feature of it. But if you need some quiet time and you really want to connect, I suggest you try one of the books um, or print it out online, um, but don't use the app because 
you just always get drawn into doing something else. You have to know which week it is. But you also have to bear in mind um, feast days, so all of the saints days, um, all of the holy days of obligation that we celebrate, um, all those things have their own prayers and it can be very easy to get lost in this book. Um, I Even at my peak of praying the hours, I would still get lost most days. So um, it's definitely something you can practice and become much better at. The app itself is called Divine Office. There you go, that one right there in the middle. Um, and so when you open it up, it actually gives you what the date is, it tells you what week we're in, and it tells you what the feast day is. So, for instance, today, April 23rd, Thursday and the second week of Easter, or St. George M. or St. Adalbert B. So, those are the prayers, or the guidance of the prayers um, for, for the day. And what it does is it gives you an About Today section, so you can read all about the saints' feast days that we're celebrating today. Um, which is cool, you get to learn about some of them. And then you go straight into the different prayers. I'll show you the list here. So those are all the different hours. Uh, and what it does is when you open the app, it actually downloads an audio file. So if you need to, you can listen to it. Um, but when you go in here, it tells you all the psalms, all the prayers themselves, and all the antiphons that you'll be saying throughout. And you can just follow along. And this is a really good way I found when first learning how to do the hours um, to pick it up. Because it tells you, and a lot of these are kind of like Mass. We say them so often in, in the liturgy of the hours that they become things you memorize. A really cool thing, at least on the app. And what I'd invite you all to do is that the app actually shows how many people are in the app praying the Liturgy of Hours right now. And it shows you around the globe where they are, which is really cool. So what I am inviting you to do is either with your families or with a friend from church or from school, um, buddy up and pick a day um, to, do, to do the hours and pray with each other. Try practicing it. Reach out to us if you have questions, but try learning something new in your prayer life. Try something new and learn about something new in your faith. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to pray with somebody. I think it would also be cool if we actually did this as a big Zoom meeting. If people are interested in that, drop it in the comments, uh, parents or children, and we can all pick a day and maybe try praying the hours together and make a commitment to each other um, and to the larger church to, to pray together. Um, so yeah, hope you guys found this interesting and look forward to seeing you next time.